Today, join me on the flight deck of Etihad Airways Boeing 7879 Dreamliner as we fly from Abu Dhabi to Osaka's Kansai International. This was really a fun one to document. Come along and watch the takeoff from Abu Dhabi. Rotate. Flying through busy airspace controlled by Muscat ATC and then over towards India and then later we'll cruise over China through a bit of Korean airspace and finally make a landing into Kansai International. All that coming right up. Let's go. It's Etihad's 20th anniversary this month, and the happy news is that anniversary coincides with a period of expansion and development at the airline. New routes are being added, and they've just opened a beautiful new terminal. And it's really nice to get an insight into their operations and meet some of the people that make up their team at this exciting time. And of course, especially to get to spend the flight on one of those brand new routes in the flight deck. I'm sitting here in a business class seat, but today is an extra special flight, something unique on Etihad, for me anyway, we're riding up front with the pilots. We're flying to Osaka. This is a new route. Etihad started it roughly a month ago, beginning of October. Extra fun to fly into Kansai, which is, as you may know, built on reclaimed land in the middle of Osaka Bay. So quite a visually stunning approach at uh, about 11 a.m. due in tomorrow. So let's check out what's happening up there. The first time we cover the Dreamliner cockpit as well. So. Let's head up. Uh, the temperature is pretty cool and, and we're not that heavy, so we'll stick with um, optimal. Okay. Yeah, stick with the optimal. Could you please check the fuel package, Captain? Yeah, fuel is good, thank you. Welcome, Captain. Okay, so again, Ali, uh, flap 5, D takeoff 2, 89.3 for the N1, 40 degrees, selected temperature. V1, 175, VR, 177, and V2 is 180. That's what you have? Yes. Okay, so when the load sheet comes, you can just transfer the data. Once it hasn't changed. Yeah, sure. That's it. Good. Check. Confirm all the reviews. Okay, transmitted successfully. Turn over page. Right. Cheers, man. Yeah. Thank you much. See you next okay. time. Yeah, have a good evening. Yeah. See you. Right? Uh, zero fuel weight 158 decimal 4, so it's gone up again. Yeah, 158. Look, we took that bit extra, which gives us a uh, takeoff weight approximately uh, 208.4. 208 I have here, and then we have total on board 225, which is 25 and 250. 225, which makes 239 total on board. We're good with that. Uh, our max tow for takeoff is 30.5. So that would be second alternate, basic weight 123868, which calculates, and pantry code is golf. Yes, correct. All good, happy, so I'm going to execute, accepting. Okay, Salah, I'll do your PA now in two seconds. Cheers. Okay, how many have we? Five. Yeah, two, two, five. Sorry, Thank you. You can, yes, you may have those, and you can tell them to lock up the doors. Thank you very much. Two zero eight six. Yeah. Two zero eight six. Please. Welcome all aboard the Satyad Airways flight. Dubai eight three zero to Osaka Kansai International Airport. And uh, we anticipate climbing to our final cruising altitude of thirty nine thousand feet on route. Weather along the route is forecast to be uh, pretty good in general. We are expecting some areas of light turbulence over China about uh, six hours into our flight. So we would please ask you to keep your seat belts fastened at all times while seated. This is for your own comfort and safety. 4208 is a model 6, yeah. you are clear for engine starts. Okay, we'll be starting uh, 1 and 2. Roger, okay, clear for 1 and 2. Good evening, Abu Dhabi Tower. Airport 1213, AFM, I'm making 5,000 feet for the Greens Delta Niner. Nothing else, check it. Nothing good. Clear left. Clear right. And before that, excuse me. Thank you. Taxi clearance again. 23830, Roger. Taxi for the Greens, holding point runway 31 left, take 15. And the lights, please, Ali. Left side is clear. Right side is clear. So we'll continue from the Greens. Follow the Greens. Let's just say holding point 15. Let's come out, Roger. Foxtrot, Whiskey, Tango, Alpha. We 
Seated check. before take off check is complete. Thank you, check is complete. You're welcome. Okay, clear the line up. The stop bar is off. Let's do everything. Coming up to Echo 15. I've got uh, weather on my side. Interior on my side. Approach path clear for traffic. Check. Nothing on approach. Uh, 
There's an angry looking storm system visible out to the left hand side, but it won't be an issue for us as we'll pass well to the south of it. This night temperature inversion, 30 degrees up here. Uh, right, 20 something in the ground. Uh, Feed up Yeah, I think we're okay to go auto. Thank you. Uh, three seven for the cruise if we can get it. Yeah. Check your normal rate. Reduce your rate. Normal rate got this five four. Got five four six and the compliance guy is doing more than one thousand. Yeah, eight three zero eight two. Right, the contact flight heading to Labri. Contact flight two one zero. Two one zero set Ali and direct position Labri please. Clear. Check. Execute. Two one zero. Check. Two one zero. Position. Position. Reset altimeters to standard. There is that activity over there to the left. They were talking about. One thousand to go. Thousand to go. No traffic. Gonna leave it at V now. One two eight two five. One two eight two. At the moment, once we're inside, 140 back to our lane. Once over our lane, 100 diverts. Roger. Uh, once we get past Laklu, 140 into Moscow. Copy that, 140. It's heading 30, climb level 29. Okay. 290 set. Yes. Press ref, enough speed. Check. Transition indicated 270. As we get into the area handled by Muscat control, it's clear this is a very busy airspace at this time of night. Many departures from the big Gulf hubs happen right around this time for overnight flights to Asia, not to mention plenty of inbound traffic from Asia headed for those same hubs. Emirates uh, 416, radio check. I fly 067, continue now with UE controller 12825. 12825, good air, 067. Saudi Air 7, equation Saudi 737, Moscow at 35 at 340. Yeah, 262 
Captain TJ is watching out for an Emirates aircraft ahead of us because although we can't see the aircraft type on the display, as you know the A380 makes up a large proportion of their fleet, and the A380 can create especially strong wake turbulence, so it's wise to be cautious and give them a wide berth just in case. Weather use of weather radar, I'll also keep weather at this stage, no terrain, okay? Operational no times, all checked, recall and notes, recall checked, no notes to apply. Quick and alerts, multiple circulars, we briefed before the departure. Special procedures for in-flight, none at the moment, we are under air traffic control, so in the case of any emergency, it's left or right as we go. Another interesting thing to know about this route is that China air traffic control uses meters instead of the global standard of feet. That creates an additional challenge for non-Chinese pilots. We'll see more of that later on in the flight. Before this, we had we had uh, manuals books where we had to sign off and sign this and give a copy here and a copy, you know, it was just a lot, and a lot of paper being used, a lot of paper being wasted. So now it's all electronic, so we just go in, we get our off blocks time, what was the off blocks? Um, uh, one seven five one. One seven. Five one. And take off. One eight zero six. One eight zero six. Uh, extra flight details, revenue, and that's basically, that's basically it then until we land, and then we, if we have any defects or anything along the way, we have to put them in, and then once we land, we, we sign off uh, the arrival fluid, fuels, etc., and then just sign it off. And it saves all the paperwork we used to have to do before, and it's... Uh, it's really, it's really a good, a good tool. So this is another uh, in-flight assistance we have. It's the, uh, it's called EWAS, and it's uh, basically updated weather. So it gives us our route, the weather along the route as we get to it, and then it's, it's connected to the Wi-Fi. So it basically updates the whole time, which tells us where we are at the moment. So here's uh, just like Muscat heading across towards India and then the route brings us across India and then it's up into Bangladesh and then Myanmar over into China a bit of high ground over China and then across the, it's the East China Sea and then across into, uh, into Osaka but it's just a very handy tool to have on board because it's a constant live update of the weather that, that we can so even though this weather is here now which is the weather out here ahead of us by the time we get there it may have updated and moved on so it gives us a good indication as, as to what lies ahead and the plan is uh, this is a, a company iPad as you can see so here we have the electronic flight bag but the whole idea is that these eventually will be moved into here and we'll have all this information which is much quicker because this is older technology which came out about 1985 with the 777 so then all this is going to be moved into this and it will be a much nicer setup it's quite a nice route because sometimes traveling to this part of the world we often have to route to the northerly route which is up over Pakistan and uh, over into China where we actually pass just to the south of K2 
with the highest point of 20, 26,700 feet or ish. And it's uh, so we, we basically cross where we have Mount Everest on the way to the right of us and K2 to the left. So it's, uh, it's quite a lot of time over high ground. Yeah. Uh, quite a lot of work because there's a lot of contingency procedures in the event of engine failures or uh, decompressions with engine failures. And this route we are constantly five hours working hard, constantly changing the escape routes, etc. So it's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. So at the moment we're at flight level 370. When we get into China, then changes to meters, and then we have to take out the meter measurements, and then we have to convert what they want us to climb to. So we have to change it by 100 feet to be at meters. And uh, everything they say to you, you must repeat. Usually you're on ATC and you call in and they will say uh, ATA 830 tonight, radar contact. And you don't have to reply, but in China if you don't reply, they'll get straight back to you. It's, uh, yeah, they're very... And a lot of, uh, as you'll notice and listen and hear later on, a lot of Chinese air traffic control, they all speak in Chinese to the Chinese airlines. So at times you're sitting there going, no, we don't know what's happening, you know, but you know. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a bit different, definitely. Keep showing your toes. Yeah. Definitely. As we go towards uh, Karachi, we're going to lose VHF frequency with Muscat, and we also will have no VHF frequency with India. So then we're connected to our CPDLC, and uh, we'll get automated messages over that, and then we'll have to check into a high frequency uh, radio station to get what's called a cell call check which just, they tell us they identify us, but we're getting all our all our instructions and everything through the automatic CPDLC, okay. which is just extremely handy. Before all this, the guys just had to try and speak on HF radio. So it's a guy in a, a, a building on the ground somewhere, and he has doesn't have you on radar, he has nothing. He depends on you to tell him where you are. And then he marks it off and everybody else has to do the same thing. But with the CPDLC, you just send them messages all the time and, and they know exactly where you are. And that's by so. a satellite, presumably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next year, they're changing. That I think after next April, there'll be no more North Atlantic clearances given. It'll be all just done at the, the uh, controller pilot okay. CPDLC. It's interesting how much it's all changing, which makes our life a bit easier. Yeah, it does, actually really does. Yeah, I think imagine, it does. Yeah. A whole lot. Coming up to uh, Karachi, Pakistan. So this is just a way of picking up the weather in the different airports along the route. We have uh, Karachi, and we have Nagpur, Calcutta. Uh, we can usually pick them up on this as well. So we go. So this will be Calcutta, and it gives you a detailed brief: the uh, runways, direction of the runways, the uh, terminal area forecast. And then the METAR, which is published every two hours. So at the moment, usual weather in India this time of year, 3,200 in haze. If clouds few, scattered 10,000 feet. Temperature 27, dew point 23 in the Q&H, which is the pressure setting at the airport, 1004. So we basically keep a check on these as we go along. We also check the NOTAMs for the airports that we may have to divert into. A lot of these airports we fly into ourselves and we're used to them anyway. So it's, uh, they become fairly familiar. There we go. So it comes up as a comm message. We open up the comm. And it gives us Karachi. So the wind is nil, 6,000 meters. No significant cloud, 26 degrees, 1014. No SIG, meaning no significant change. So it's pretty much all Cat 1. If we uh, need to divert into any of the airfields, there is no problem. No high ground to deal with, so all happy. Cost index was 22, right? Ali it was, yeah. Thanks. The cost index is... It's a ratio they use to uh, basically indicate your, your cruise speed based on a cost index, which the company uses was initially 22. So now, with our conditions at the moment, our, our, our actual weight at the moment and the altitude we're at, and our saturated air temperature at this altitude, it gives you a new recommended cost index of 58. So you just go into VNAV page there for a minute, so you'll see how it changes. 
At the moment we're cruising at Mach decimal 839, which is our Econ, and we're going to land at the moment with 8.3 tonnes at, at that time. So to change this, it's a fuel saving concept that they've come up with, so we went to performance, and changed the cost index to what I have here, which is 58. And that will bring us back to decimal. Now we cruise slightly faster at decimal 844. Now we have saved seven minutes. And we're now landing with eight tons. So as the cost index increases, your speed cruise uh, Mach number increases. But it usually works out at a better fuel saving for the company. So now our cabin altitude is 6,100 feet over here. So even though we're at um, 37,000 feet, it doesn't really matter, we go 39, we go 41, this cabin altitude, it will maintain a cabin altitude of approximately 6,000 feet. In the 777, that's about 8,000 feet. So naturally you're going to be more dehydrated, etc. on the longer flights. So it is, then again, the 777 is 1985 technology, so it's, it's a bit older. Performance-wise, as an engine, performance, output, etc., Triple Seven is uh, much more, much better performance on it. We're all waiting on the Triple Seven X, right? Yes. That's going to be the best of both worlds. That's so amazing. That's, uh, yeah. I'm not sure where UBG is. I don't know. A thousand feet below us. You can see him here, so he's indicated. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have your TCAS, your traffic collision avoidance systems, but to have them there in front of you, it's really you know. It's if this was a 380, we'd be quite cautious, even though the wind would be blowing. The turbulence that direction he's wake you're still at this distance you'll be pretty uh, cautious about maybe hitting hitting his wake you know especially when you see uh emirates because yeah. emirates is half good, of yeah. the 380 <laughs> you know, yeah. now it tells us to contact mumbai on 135 so we accept there then it should come up here Mumbai, uh, good uh, evening at your heart at uh, 30 maintaining the flight level 370 FDR 830 identify next port explain. This is our heads up display. For low visibility it's amazing. Yeah. On this flight we have three flight crew, including two captains. The second captain, Michel, will be in command of the flight back to Abu Dhabi in a few days time. During this flight, each has a turn at taking what's called controlled rest. Now it's First Officer Ali's turn. I take the opportunity to go get some rest as well. Right, so after a very fascinating two hours up in the Dreamliner flight deck, including a really busy takeoff out of Abu Dhabi with the air traffic control, just so much traffic. Fascinating to hear, to see. First time in the Dreamliner cockpit was definitely everything I hoped it would be. And I have the uh, classic Etihad steak sandwich. I have it on every flight in Etihad business class. And uh, try and get a couple hours of rest. This is a shorter flight. The last time I did one of these overnights filming in the cockpit, it was a 12 hour plus flight. So more time to sleep in the middle. This one is just eight and a bit. So really only enough time for maybe two or three hours of sleep, but it's better than nothing. And uh, feel a little bit more fresh for the last part of the filming and arrival late morning in Osaka. So I'll catch you on the other side of that. And when we go back into the flight deck a little bit later, amazing cockpit crew on this one. Just, I mean, as is so often the case, just hospitable, friendly, interesting people. It's just so nice to be around people like that. So, good night for a short night. I'll be back with you shortly.
I sleep about three hours, which isn't really enough, but at least I did sleep like a rock in this comfy seat, and the lovely crew brings me an iced Americano and a muffin to wake up. I didn't want to miss too much of the flight through Chinese airspace, and we're already over the eastern part of the country. Who knew an eight hour plus flight could feel too short? You'll notice that a lot of the chatter on Chinese ATC is in Mandarin. Obviously, they speak English with foreign carriers, but with most Chinese airlines, they do away with that. You got a bit of a snooze, you did? Yeah, yeah. it's good. It has to be done. 28128. Uh, So you can talk to the Koreans for just a short while there. A short spell. Yeah. Yeah. So it tells us the uh, the runway in use for landing. Mm -hmm. And then you got the winds from the south, 14 knots, 30 kilometers visibility. There's a few clouds. 26 degrees. It's quite nice, even at this hour of the morning, so yeah. So we got uh, shear values which are called which is an indication that there may well be turbulence in this area and there we go this is position sasan which we just passed at our level it starts here at six then it increases to eight 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 and that's pretty high it goes to a max value of ten it can be there it may not be there but it's something we have to keep in mind that it may well be a bit bumpy here. As we fly over the East China Sea and into Incheon FIR, we're getting close to what will be the top of descent into Kansai. But first, the flight crew preps for the descent down to 39,000 feet from the Chinese mandated 39,100, which is 11,900 meters. A descent of just 100 feet to get back onto an international standard flight level. There's a band of weather out to the east, but Captain TJ isn't too concerned about it. That actually may not affect us even if we were flying towards it, because when it's more than 80 nautical miles out, it's usually below the aircraft because the weather radar is tilted down 2.5 because we're currently nose up 2.5. Nice tailwind. Yeah. Huge tailwind. We used to have the 120 knots right on the tail. So basically, you take your ground speed and then you add this to it, and that gives your speed over the ground. We're doing about 723. Miles now over the ground basically. But it will really hurt us in two days time going back. Yeah, because we'll be going that much slower, so. It's hardly worth putting it up. Take it back down again. 
So this shows you the height of the cloud. This shows you that, that, that we may actually run into it here between Bigot and uh, so somewhere here. But then when we press on this, it'll give us a CB forecast global weak thunderstorm flight level 330 to 430, so it's above us. They may be embedded or, or they're only occasional, so they'll be here and here. So you can just fly around. Let's just get inside one hour from top of the scent, so it gives us our top of the scent point, which is basically 32 minutes from now. Time to get the headsets on and begin the descent a little earlier than expected. And in the cruise, the nice one to Abbey, secure name, secure. They descended us very early. And this is Japan at 308, though. We encountered a moderate turbulence around the bridge uh, at altitude of uh, uh, flight level 190 to 210. Flight on the main day, flight level 250. Zero eight, left heading 100. Japan at 308, left heading 100. 290 set. Check. Let's do a speed BS for a minute. Once we're well below profile, anyways. We'll see Dream at 302 flight on the main stage, flight level 270. Dream flight level 330, Japan 664. 44-7-9-4, traffic information, 9 o'clock to 151 is converting, leaving flight level 273, descending flight level 210, Boeing 7899. 44-7-9-4, looking at negative contact. Alpha, 1-2-1, Bravo, descent on the main chain, flight level 260. Japan Air 608-84, contact Kobe Control, 127, this one five. One two seven, this one one five, Japan six zero eight eight. You just take uh, terrain on your side, please, Ali, from here in. Yeah. Okay, yeah, day three zero, comes by approach. Expect Ida Suzuki, runway two four, right approach. Information India is current. Q and S two nine nine seven. Okay, yeah, day three zero, confirm runway. Expect Ida Suzuki, runway two four, right approach. Navigation two nine nine seven. Check. I will check the idea. At the end, 830, clear via uh, Charlie Alive. I'll descend a reach out of a 150 by ramp. Okay, so I have control? Yeah, your controls is already in there anyway. Okay, there's Randy. Number Charlie, your controls. Thousand to go. Back, edit clip. Okay, so from Bert, it's inbound to Awaji, 7,000 and above, Lilac, Mayhan, and then around onto the runway for 2-4, right? We'll be after Mayhan. Being about? Check. Okay. Bravo, Bravo, 450, Bravo, Bravo, 451. ATF 830, is I maintain 1-0,000, nice again, QNH 29907. Check. Take the approach checklist, please. Eighty hot eight three zero. Eighty hot eight zero. Awaji. Eighty hot eight three zero. Eighty hot eight three zero. Direct to Awaji. Direct to Awaji. No, direct to Awaji. I will give it to you. Okay, Awaji. Thank you. Okay, Awaji. Confirm. Yeah. Execute. Altimeters. Q and H set and cross checked. Two nine nine seven. Approach, 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 
check. So gear down, flaps 20, please. Ready to wait, 160 to 4. Last of alive. Check. Light slow capture. 3000 set for missed approach altitude. Lapse 25. Landing checklist, please. Landing is complete. Checklist complete. Thank you. Clear to land. Land 3, roll out flare R. Check. We check. Bump 6 at all at one 16011, 10 knot cross. Flight director. Check. 1000. 3.0 kilometers down. down. Mm, profile. Check. 500. Stable. Approaching minimums. Minimums. Check. One hundred. Osaka after the beautiful flight in with Etihad on the Dreamliner. I hope you enjoyed getting to see a little bit of what goes into flying the 787 on a longish haul flight like this. Eight and a half hours, not too bad. We had a really strong tailwind for part of the way. I had an amazing time flying up in the cockpit of the 787 as well as my little stint getting a few hours of sleep in the business class seat. And the cockpit crew were just amazing on this one. Really nice spending a little time with the people at Etihad and then getting to come in over Osaka Bay, seeing the built up environment around there, coming in with Kansai Airport off to our right, turning in, bit of a crosswind landing, bit bumpy here and there, 
Uh, just amazing. Such a privilege to get a chance to be in the jump seat for that. And uh, I gotta thank that crew once again. Both cabin crew and cockpit crew, just unbelievably friendly, hospitable, amazing. Um, so much fun for me. I hope you had fun too. And so I'll catch you next time in Osaka for Flight Radar 24. I'm Gabriel Lee.